everybody. So today uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about advertising. Um, so a couple of things I want to uh, just universal truths that I want to make sure that we all understand is um, there's no such thing as you guys doing any form of advertising at all. Social media, postcards, signs, uh, websites, such that it does not specifically identify the brokerage that is hanging your license. That's not just KW, the logo that's universal and could apply to many different brokerages. That means Keller Williams Realty Heart of Atlanta. I mean, not Heart of Atlanta, Keller Williams Realty Buckhead, Keller Williams uh, uh, S Signature Partners. Uh, it has to be on file with the Georgia Real Estate Commission. It's, it's not about the logo per se. It's about the name such that if a real estate commission investigator were to look at the marketing piece and you are identifying yourself as being in the real estate industry, as being uh, promoting yourself in any way, shape or form as being a real estate licensee, real estate agent, you must include along with your name. This is on every single solitary piece of advertising, the name of the firm that holds your license. The logo, again, is not that important. It is the actual words so that they could, if they were to read the name of the brokerage that holds your license, they could type it in and find it and it would pop up and they could see the name of the licensed firm. So um, the other element is if you are advertising specific real estate, specific property, you have an additional layer on the advertising and that additional layer is that you have to include um, the phone number of the main broker that holds your license, the brokerage, um, as well as the name and the font and frequency of the broker's name and phone number have to be as frequent, as uh, bold, as prominent as your name and number. Um, this would apply to social media where you're advertising property. It would apply to um, websites where people can access and do searches of properties. Um, it absolutely applies to signs. Now, if you have limited Any direction, yes. Uh, uh, well, if it's a if it's a directional that's not sitting in front of the property, it's just saying that there's a house for sale that way. I don't know that you have to have the broker's phone number on the directional or or what have you. But um, because it but it's when it's sitting in front of the house where you can say this right. is absolutely tied to the house. There's there's no question about it. But I would say social media is the number one area where agents make a mistake. They advertise themselves on their personal Facebook page, but then they end up using that or Instagram to promote themselves as an agent. Or even worse, honestly, they um, will advertise their team name and your team name is not licensed. That team name is not a licensed entity. You're the licensed entity. But suppose that team name is incorporated so you can get paid uh, your commission to that same name. Um, I've seen agents actually get charged with practicing as an unlicensed firm because they happen to have that team name also as an LLC, which is perfectly fine, perfectly fine for you to have that team name. It's when you are advertising that business and that team name is your team as if it's its own real estate company to the public. And you're not saying this is a team with Keller Williams Metro Atlanta. This is a team with Keller Williams Signature Partners. This is a team with Keller Williams Realty Buckhead. That's when you become it becomes a huge problem. Now, in the license law uh, rules, it says that if you have limited character space, you can provide if it's online advertising, you can provide a direct link. And when people open that direct link, if that's compliant, then then you're OK. But um, so that's only that exception only exists when it comes to online advertising and then. The other part that you guys need to put into practice is you need to be very, very familiar um, with um, how to get a hold of me and Tom because we're going to be able to um, approve your advertising. And again, if you ever get investigated by the Real Estate Commission for an advertising infraction, they're going to ask you, um, did you um, did you uh, send this? They're going to ask us as the brokers, uh, did they send this to you for approval before they published it or put it online? And if we can't find um, proof that that happened, we have to answer honestly and say no. So 
let us, you know, be a participant there. Let us help you by just emailing us. I just put it in the chat, broker at heart atl.com and uh, just send these things to us and let us bless it and give our opinion. And G, I've had uh, uh, in the past and uh, guys on the uh, on the Zoom call, I've had calls from uh, the Georgia Real Estate Commission where an agent changed their signage and it wasn't compliant um, mm -hmm. at all. And they had to spend, I mean, like thousands thousand dollars yeah. to redo everything, including their website. Um, and it doesn't matter how long you've had your website. I've had another agent uh, in the Decatur Market Center, and she'd had her same website for like 15 years and suddenly got investigated and had to go through and make all these changes that were very costly to her website. So, um, you know, just FYI, uh, I, I, let us I've be seen a partner it. with you on that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I've seen it happen to extremely successful agents. And sometimes the person complaining that's uh, notifying and turning you into the real estate commission is a uh, actual lot of the time. It's a fellow agent that's either jealous or angry or you ticked them off in a co-op or you guys had some sort of a ugly exchange and now they're going to get back at you and uh, I had one of my largest teams had 76 members and they ended up with um, like a two or $3,000 fine, but they ended up spending about ten, twelve thousand $12,000 in redoing all their marketing because a jealous competitor reported them. And while 90% of the things they had were compliant, they had an exterior sign on their uh, team office that wasn't compliant. And what happened was, and I've had this happen to other agents, all of their social media had to be taken down. Their website had to be unpublished. Um, it, it cost them so much money and business. And the team leader told me, he said, I would have struck a check without even batting an eyelash to the real estate commission and done everything I could to have gotten compliant just to have prevented myself from the hell I've been through for the past four or five months. Yes, uh, I see a hand up. Thank you so much, Angie. So uh, is it too late? So uh, what about the past post on Facebook? I may violate some of those stuff. I always have the logo, but not always have the name written. But most of the time I share the link. Is I put the link now in the comment below for all the previous posts. If this will make me say. Well, I mean, you know, if you have an old post that's not compliant, my advice would be, especially if it's advertising a house that's no longer available, you really need to just take that down. Um, I mean, if you can delete things that are outdated, that would probably be best. Um, you know, and you're really supposed to keep things updated. So having old posts about old houses that are no longer available, if you have control over that, you're really supposed to take that down. We're not supposed to um, have uh, um, things out there that aren't accurate. We have like a 10 day time frame. If we have control over that media, if we have control over that website and control over that media, we're really supposed to update that to show that it's under contract or that it's no longer available and not just have it out there um, indefinitely. So I, I would clean it up, but anytime you're not compliant, the key is get compliant. They do actually look at that is if in the past you weren't compliant, but now they can see you are compliant. That goes a long way. Um, and, and again, this is not something the real estate commission is not out there, um, uh, trolling around looking for people's sites. They're, you know, they're waiting, they're, they're fielding hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of complaints that come in. And sometimes it could be an angry client, but I would say when it comes to advertising violations, it's almost always competitors. I'm just being honest yep. with you. It is. Yes. Yep. Thank you. So much. I had uh, an incident not too long ago where one of our sellers, an agent showed the property uh, who was uh, a buyer's agent and filmed the property and put it all over her social media. And the seller had a fit. Oh, and I've had, we've had people threaten to sue for that. Yeah. Oh, thank I mean, you for he bringing that up. Sue. And uh, so I had to work with the other broker. And let me tell you, this agent took it down on some places, didn't take it down on other places. And they were on top of it. I got calls for uh, weeks 
about that until everything was taken down. So uh, long story short, don't ever go in and um, film somebody's listing or take photographs for your social media, because even though the agent may say it's okay, the consumer Correct. probably won't like that. Well, and Tom, uh, you bring up a wonderful point here, and I'm so glad you brought that up because I hadn't thought of that, but that that is a huge problem. You know, guys, I will say this again and again and again. It's 25 years. I'm still saying it. Rule number one is don't take advice from other agents. That means don't just do what you see them do. OK, this thing we were just discussing on the industry update about the um, NAR lawsuits and the commission compensation lawsuits and the class action lawsuits. That was the worst case of widespread breaking of rule number one, where agents were engaging bad practices that other agents were engaging in. And this has caused these massive uh, um, uh, widespread class action lawsuits. Well, same thing here, guys, just because you see agents doing things on social media and posting stuff and it seems like that's okay, it's not okay. And I'm telling you, I, as a broker, um, even before I was fortunate enough to work here, I was fielding all kinds of crazy complaints. We had this one lady, a um, couple people doing like random photo shoots and doing uh, things to promote themselves as agents, using people's beautiful homes and scheduling fake showing appointments that didn't exist and going in there and, 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 um, and, and doing like little uh, scripted out little uh, commercials for themselves. And I'm telling you, that is not the reason you've been issued a lockbox key. You are violating so many things by going in there. You do not have that seller's um, permission to advertise. Okay, so that's a violation. And um, and then you're also using a lockbox key in a, in, a, in a way that it was not intended. You're saying that you're coming in to show a property to a prospect and you're not. You're going in there to film and, and, and this and that. One in one in particular, um, somebody was filming a reality show and the person was dancing on the countertops. <laughs> Another one, a uh, uh, an agent I heard about this made the news was uh, uh, doing a photo shoot, had a makeup artist and a photographer in someone's home and was basically using their beautiful home to do her photo shoot. And um, the seller saw them on the Zoom camera and confronted them and it got really ugly and the police were called. Um, I had another incident where an agent was making comments previewing um, um, uh, a house that they were uh, claiming they were previewing for a client and they were kind of dogging the decor and making comments and even picking up personal pictures of the person that owned the home. And I'm just telling you, you see that kind of stuff out there, guys. Um, and I realized that for some people, they get away with it for a while and maybe even it gets them a lot of followers and attention on social media, but you can get seriously smacked down for this. Seriously smacked Thank down God. for this. So please don't do that. I saw Manny said, add billboards, paid sponsorships where logo shows up can definitely get pricey. Yep. Yeah, so we've got to be, yeah, we got to be careful. Just when in doubt, email broker at heartatl.com and let Tom and I uh, vet it and let us help take on that responsibility for you because that's really a huge part of our job is to kind of um, uh, offer that advice. But we can't do it if you guys don't include us and if you don't help us make it a we problem. It's really not a you problem, it's a we problem. We just need to know what our problem is and we will help. Um, seems like there was some, oh, another one, uh, owner agent, a uh, couple, uh, this falls in line with advertising. Um, it doesn't matter if you are an investor, it doesn't matter if you own, a, an LLC and you're buying as an LLC or under a trust. Um, this kind of goes in line with the advertising. If you are a principal, a buyer or a seller, you are going to, you are an owner or going to be the owner of the property that you have under contract or putting in an offer. The uh, rules of the Real Estate Commission require that you notify us, again, broker at heartatl.com, prior to putting in any offer, prior to listing that property, prior to leasing a property that you own. But over and above that, you must, must, must disclose that in uh, the contract, and it can't be vague, managing member is a licensee in the state of Georgia. 
if you are the managing member, you need to say <laughs> buyer agent is a managing member of the LLC that, uh, that, you know, that's purchasing the property. It needs to be very, very clear. And um, ideally also uh, quote your license number. It has to be super duper clear. You need to put that either in the broker relationship paragraph, material relationship section C, or in the special steps, but that is absolutely required. If you are advertising something that you own, again, even if you own it as an investor and you own it under an LLC or trust or some other entity and not um, uh, just as an individual person, you have to not only put that in the MLS, not only make sure it gets into the contract, but you have to put it in all forms of advertising. So it has to be on MLS, FMLS, public remarks everywhere on the sign. And it has to be very clear that this is an agent owner, agent principal property. And again, that's going to fall in advertising, but that also covers the disclosure of yourself as a principal and licensee. And that's another very serious license law requirement. Yeah. And guys, from a compliance perspective, um, under your um, consultation uh, folder, if you will just upload a letter to uh, to uh, the broker about uh, that you're purchasing or selling a personal property at this property address and upload it into your command file, um, that will be sufficient. Perfect. So, uh, and secondly, uh, for those of you who do not know this, because I've had to clean up some uh, messes, um, is that if you're buying or selling a personal property, must be your primary residence, you the FMLS fee is waived. But what you have to do is you have to get with me, give me your a copy of your settlement statement, and there's a form that I have to fill out when you close on the property, and it's all automated in uh, their system that I will send in on your behalf and um, get the that FMLS fee waived. Again, not for uh, uh, investment property, only if it's your primary residence that you're buying or selling, that fee will be waived. So if you will um, let me know when that happens um, and upload that letter in your compliance folder, then I can get that fee waived for you uh, but I've had some people who didn't really know that. And uh, six months later, we're trying to get reimbursed uh, for that agent in FMLS fees. And um, it's just it's almost impossible to do so. Are there any questions about that? OK. Any questions at all about advertising rules or any confusion? How many of you guys see people out there on social media that you're pretty sure they're with a big name brokerage, but on their social media, they're just advertising their name and they're in that they're in the business or their team name. I see it a lot. All the time. All I the see time. it a lot. Yeah. But but see, Natalie, that kind of goes to that same point of rule number one. So just because we see other people getting away with it doesn't mean that we need to get away with it because it's only a matter of time before um, before uh, that can end up coming to bite you. And so just because other people want to do stuff and 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 I say this thing with the you know with the conversations that um, uh, agents were having listing agents in particular were having across the board and there was massive sting operation uh, and inv undercover investigators that went out and posed as sellers before all these lawsuits happened which now resulted in this uh, these uh, class action lawsuits over um, uh, brokerage compensation and I'm just telling you guys there was a massive amount of rule number one being broken and this is something we see again and again in advertising and advertising violations. And I don't want you guys, uh, Carlin, you have your hand up and then after you, Will has his hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I had a question about Facebook groups. Um, there is a Facebook group in my neighborhood that is has been put on by a realtor. She's not letting any other realtors in, but she's not advertising it as a um, she's advertising as a social group, not as a networking group, but she's made it clear that this is what she wants to do. Is she required to put a 
any of this information on these Facebook posts or how does that work? Well, I mean, again, if she's advertising, uh, now people can have private groups and we can't stop people from having private groups. But if she is advertising uh, that she is in the real estate business, then she would need to be compliant on any advertising where she's in any way identifying to people and holding herself as out as being a real estate professional rather than this is just my personal Facebook page, but I'm a real estate professional and I'm advertising that I am that is providing those services and this is what I do for a living. Then uh, again, that I don't know how she's advertising if she's just saying that this is, you know, me as someone who lives in this neighborhood. But again, if she's advertising herself as being, um, being in the um, real estate business, she needs to identify, and it can be small font, but she has to identify the name of the firm that holds her license, not their logo necessarily, but the words uh, XYZ uh, Realty or whoever she's licensed with. And that that's because she's holding out to the public. Uh, it's just like me saying, um, I'm Angie, I'm Angie Realty. Well, Angie Realty is not a licensed entity. I'm Angie Meza Smith, and I'm in the real estate business. Well, I have to say who I'm with. And uh, my license is with Keller Williams uh, Realty Heart of it. I, I mean, uh, um, that's my employer, but um, my license is hung with Keller Williams Realty Buckhead. That makes sense. Thank you. Appreciate and see, it. Carlin, you're making the point here because when agents are out there doing these kind of shenanigans, other agents get fed up with it and they uh, uh, screenshot, print out copies of their stuff and report them. And sometimes that's the only thing you can do because it's not going to, until somebody has some sort of consequence to pay, it's not going to, they're not going to lose their license over minor infractions, but they'll get a very nasty traffic ticket and uh, it'll probably cost them six, $700 and they'll make them shut down all their social media and, um, and they'll analyze every, all the practices they're engaging in. It's not pleasant. We get we get uh, screenshots all the time from consumers and from other agents that we have to address. Yep. Will, you had a question? Yeah, just actually going back to um, like marketing other agent properties. So it's not enough to just get permission from that listing agent and mentioning them in um, your social media um Correct. Uh, well, if you have a link, Post. if you the mm -hmm. if you are going to get permission to uh, advertise, it doesn't need to be you doing a video um, and things like that. It uh, the real estate commission wants you to have a direct link to the compliant advertising. So, if you were going to say get permission from another agent and promote this fabulous new listing you are required to have a link that when the public clicks on it, it shows compliant advertising, either it's your compliant advertising or it's compliant advertising showing that this is an XYZ Realty uh, listing and that it's not actually your listing. So if you have limited space in like a social media post uh, to put like the phone number and all the other things that you would be required for a um, uh, advertising a specific property, you must have a direct link that when that link is opened, it shows the legal compliant advertising. Okay, because I know like Instagram, you can't, does not support links. So yeah, interesting. That's tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is Well, tough. the other thing and I would say, and I've dealt with this where the homeowner uh, was very, very upset that this agent came in and filmed their house and put it on her social media site. So I would say the best practice is if the listing agent uh, allows you to do so, they need something in writing from their mm -hmm. client that says mm -hmm. that it's okay. Or you're just putting the multiple listing link with pictures or something that's the other agents already approved advertising that that homeowner's already advertised. But when you okay. go in and make your own video, that, that can be very problematic. And, yeah. um, and, like we said, uh, w uh, this one incident with the girl that did the photo shoot, she had, was a newly licensed agent and she set, uh, set up a, a showing time appointment and went in there, brought a hairdresser, makeup artist and photographer and didn't realize that the uh, owner of the property had cameras and was watching this going on in this property. And he showed up with a gun and this made the news. And of course, she got fired immediately wow. and got reported to the real estate commission. But, you know, people can get crazy 
I mean, people can yeah. get crazy. Like a whole and, big production and yeah, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But she's not the only one. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. yeah. there, there's been there have been people trying to do um uh, um reality shows. There's been yeah. people that have tried to do like little quick dance videos or act like they themselves are a rich, famous celebrity by being in this fancy house and doing their own videos. And, you know, it, that kind of crap, guys, that is not, you know, I, I'm, I know no one on this call would do stuff like that. You guys are professionals, but you see stuff like that out there and it's just, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. Especially I, I think it's homeowners that own those expensive homes uh, also have, uh, and I've been dealing this somewhat on uh, on our GAR forms, where certain affluent clients do not want to disclose their email and phone number on our GAR forms. And um, so it's, it's an issue, particularly in their home, you know, and so that has to be respected, number mm -hmm. one. But... Um, yeah, it, it's it, it it can get very very problematic. Good to know. Thank you. I had a, I had a question. Many Resinos. Hola, hola. <laughs> I had a question, a little related to that, because we do a lot of talking about, hey, go get content, get content, that kind of thing. Um, you mentioned Angie the letter, right? Like having a letter from the seller. Now that is to me the responsibility of the listing agent, right? So as far yes. as if I am, if I am, you know, a buyer or, you know, we tell agents go to open house, get content. If my responsibility ends at asking the listing agent, Hey, I would love to film content and promote your property. Is that, you know, do I have permission for that? If they say, yes, that is my written consent to do it. Correct. I mean, I don't. It, oh, actually don't the worry. way, the, the way, the way that, um, the license law reads, it says you're not allowed to do advertising for anyone for a, a property owner without that property owner's permission. So you have to have permission from the actual seller. I mean, the listing agent, because they have exclusive right to sell and you can't do something without their permission because you're interfering with their exclusive right to sell or their exclusive advertising rights. But then the license law just has this universal, you can't advertise other people's property without their permission. So I would say you so need to have some not sort advertise. of- you, you need some sort of proof that the seller has blessed this and given that. But here's the other uh, factor of that, Manny, is when when you do a video like that, if you sent that video to the agent to have the seller review it, then uh, then post it. That would be the absolute best practice because with these other agents where the sellers felt violated, the sellers were violated because their home's being used in an inappropriate way. Or in this one time, we had an agent that went out and until he got smacked down about this several times, he kept doing it. He would go in and make snarky comments about people's decor, yeah. about this looking outdated. You guys have seen videos like this about uh, uh, one agent it went, went through their clothes in their closet and were commenting on their clothes or their personal pictures. That, it, that sort of thing is completely inappropriate. So what I would do is, I, if you're going to post something like that, send the video to the agent and say, I'd like to post this on my social media. Please run this by your seller and make sure it's okay. That's the absolute best practice is yeah. send them what you're about to post. Let them show it to their client. And if the client says, yes, that's getting me more exposure and this is flattering to me and my house, of course, that's the yeah. absolute best practice. Before There's always someone that ruins it. There's always someone that ruins it for all of us. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Will, did you have a follow-up question? Okay. No, I'm just kind of in my mind auditing all of my social media. And I'm wondering if um, you know, I should maybe send you my social media links and we can yep. do some auditing. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's just this is a conversation that that again, we we have to kind of we all we all get comfortable, we all get relaxed, and we all break rule number one. We all break the rule of just doing what other people are doing and jumping on the bandwagon and not thinking much about it until all of a sudden something ugly happens, like what happens with with the uh, uh, all the the bad listing uh, advice and the bad listing appointments. Oh well, of course, sellers, you have to offer a co op fee. Oh, you have to offer a co op fee of a certain amount. And it has to be this amount or else people will boycott your listing. That kind of stuff, all of that was illegal. All of that was wrong. All of that was inaccurate. Yet 
people were breaking rule number one and saying those types of things on a large enough scale that we are in the situation that we're in today. But those rule number one bad practices, they they can happen in many different ways. And um, and and you know, advertising, because especially with social ma- media, we are like our own little media uh, uh, free uh, uh, marketeers with social media. It allows us to do all this stuff very easily with uh, um, on our own and uh, be super creative. And, and in doing so, it can go off the rails pretty quickly and pretty easily. I also just wanted to remind people that uh, in addition to um, license law and uh, Georgia Real Estate Commission rules and regulations, Keller Williams also has regulations in terms of uh, what our uh, signs uh, or guidelines, I should say, of what our signs should, uh, should include. And I know that um, this is a, a total... Um, <laughs> runaway train, I should say, but um, ideally, and what the rules are, is that 25% of our uh, sign is supposed to be red, and um, that, you know, I would just say and caution you, before you have your signs printed, let Angie or I uh, approve them because you don't want to be in a situation where you get reported and then have to redo all your signage. Yeah. And and again, with signs, the name and number of the brokerage, uh, people have been asking me in the chat, can I just put KW? No, you cannot. KW could be KW Tokyo. It could be anywhere. That doesn't tell the Real Estate Commission which Keller Williams office. You, that could be a thousand different offices. It doesn't tell the Real Estate Commission which office. Okay, you have to actually um, look up your brokerage or look at the way that it is listed on uh, FMLS Georgia MLS. The way that it's uh, identified with the Real Estate Commission. Now, most of our licensed firms have multiple DBAs. As long as you're using one of the DBAs. Um, that is under um, uh, the Real Estate Commission uh, website as a registered DBA for that name. For example, uh, Keller Williams um, uh, Realty Buckhead is uh, uh, also known as Keller Williams Buckhead, also known as Signature Part or Premier uh, uh, Premier Partners. Um, Premier you know, LLC. Pr- Premier yeah. LLC. Um, none of us really use that. Um, we use the DBA that says Keller Williams Realty Buckhead. But it's got to be something that if the Real Estate Commission investigator were to type it in and K and W alone is not going to give them the name of the, that's going to be the name of the firm that's holding your license. Yeah. So um, but on signs it has to be the name of the firm that's holding your license, um, as well as that main office number for the firm that's holding your license. And they must be as frequent and as bold and as same or larger font size um, as your name and number. Your name and number are actually optional. Broker's name and number on advertising real estate is not optional. Yeah, and uh, Jennifer Cowan had a, a question. And yes, Jennifer, you are correct. If you're a luxury agent, you can use the the uh, luxury color scheme, which is black and white. Do we have to have the luxury logo on there? Can't use the luxury logo unless you are a member of the luxury division of Keller Williams. But if the luxury, uh, if the luxury logo is just specialized luxury logo and not the name of the firm uh, that is a DBA, you have to also include the name of the firm that is a DBA. So the luxury logo is just like a special branding thing over and above. Yeah. I would say, guys, be proud of the brokerage that you're with. We're power hitters. It's great to advertise the brokerage that you're with when you're with one of the Keller Williams Heart of Atlanta group offices because we rock and we do a lot of volume and we're very well known. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that and and showcase that in your advertising? Zip, you had a question. Um, It was more of a statement if 
people are going out and getting new signs through any of the Keller Williams uh, preferred vendors, I know their sample signs don't have the right uh, size phone number and everything, but they're um, to show that the broker is just as big as we are, but they are very willing to work with you very easily to make that happen. So it's wonderful. You don't have to, um, you don't have to not use them because it doesn't look like they can do that. They can very easily. Well, thanks for bringing that up, Zip, because, you know, this is a international franchise company and different states have different regulations. Georgia has a very persnickety regulation on having not only the phone number uh, be there of the main brokerage, whereas in Florida, the broker's phone number is not required on the sign. So it just depends on state to state. I don't know any state that doesn't require the brokerage name, but with Georgia, it's also the brokerage phone number and then the font size and prominence is is also required. But so when you we're dealing with a inter, uh, a national vendor, um, they're they're struggling to try and create something that works. But you're right. Our requirement here in Georgia may be more than somebody else's in another state. And, and guys, the rationale behind that is because the state of Georgia wants the consumer to be able to contact the broker um, for whatever you know reason, whether it's a complaint, a compliment, um, whatever. They want that consumer to be able to uh, easily be able to contact the broker. Or report the broker. Um, yes. <laughs> or uh, also uh, because what was happening is agents were out there uh, before this rule became really cracked down, which has been about, oh, gosh, Tom, what do you think about 15 years ago that they really started cracking down on this with the font size and everything? You had so many agents yeah. out there that were advertising without their broker on the sign at all. And th uh, the public could not track down the broker and agents are fingers attached to the body and the body is the broker or the brokerage and they could not be uh, uh, held accountable because the public couldn't find who is ultimately accountable. And so it's all about a, a holding, it's protection of the public and it's holding agents and brokers accountable. And, um, and protection of the public is the reason every single one of these laws exist. Yeah. There's a sign around the corner in my neighborhood and it's just, it's got the name of the agent as real estate agent and her phone number. That's it. Yeah. When you guys start really looking around, especially on social media and stuff, and then you just go look on the real estate commission website and you look up some of these agents by name under uh, information and verify a license, you'll be astounded at how bad it is. And until enough people send in enough complaints and words and rumors get around that, you know, this is a bad practice that's going on, um, it doesn't usually uh, tamp it down. Um, and then it'll tamp it down for a while and then it rears its ugly head again. It all goes in a cycle. Yeah. So with uh, social media and um, uh, the way people identify themselves, a lot of that, it can be a little bit ambiguous. Um, so how strict is that? I guess even for just in general, it could be a broader thing with, you know, like nicknames and things like that. But uh, it would probably be more primarily with the social media space where a lot of people might have already maybe created a, a certain online presence that might be a derivative of their name or something like that that or uh, those type of situations? How how are they supposed to address that? Well, um, the way the Real Estate Commission looks at that too, that's, and you bring up another uh, really good point. Uh, the Real Estate Commission says you're not supposed to advertise your name um, it, it, that is different from the way that it appears on your license. So there is a guard change form. Uh, and if you want to be known as a nickname, or if you uh, say you get married or divorced or change your last name or whatever, uh, there's a change application that you send in. We don't even have to sign it as the broker, but you sign it and you can uh, change the way your name appears on your license. So you can go to the Real Estate Commission website, do a change application form and change the way you market your name. Uh, like, for instance, some people go by their middle name instead of their first name. Um, and, and that's how they brand themselves. And so uh, I would I would say only because I've seen people actually get in trouble for this, 
um, you know, again, imagine the real estate commission investigator typing a name into the database and they need to be able to find the brokerage you're licensed with. Then they need to type your name in and find you. And if they can't, that's a problem. That's a potential violation. So I would say on all social media presence, if you're using that to brand yourself, now, obviously people can have personal pages just about myself. I'm just Angie who is has friends on Facebook and this and this. I choose to put, uh, you know, my brokerage information on Facebook because I just feel like it's wise for me to have that because thousands of my Facebook friends happen to be in the real estate industry, even though I don't sell real estate anymore, um, that it's just wise to, to make that a big part of my uh, cover photo, um, just because uh, so much of what I do on social media is going to touch over into the real estate area. So the the lesser thing I do on social media is personal chats and posts with personal friends that aren't in the real estate industry. So um, so if, again, that's uh, applicable to you, you need to make sure that at minimum, you have the name of the brokerage, not just the KW logo, but the name of the brokerage, even if it's in small font, mentioned somewhere on all those, uh, 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 you know, cover pictures, the cover photo the and the post where you're advertising something. And if you are going by a nickname or something, I would highly encourage you to submit, uh, take five minutes, pull up that GAR change application and submit uh, the the uh, uh, change of name application and see if they'll approve it so you can brand yourself that way. Yeah, and and sometimes they won't approve it. Yeah, they may not, but at least you can try. If you really, really yeah. want to brand yourself that way, like uh, uh, Laura, if, if Laura wanted to brand herself as Zip, or what have you, and use her, that as her nickname, um, and leave out uh, Laura. Then um, I would I would say if you want to remove Laura um, from the way you describe yourself in your social media or your advertising, and just go with your nickname Zip, then um, I would definitely say at least try to get uh, the change application done. Uh, so that the real estate commission is not going to make a big fuss over it if they uh, detect um, something. We have a lot of agents that use nicknames. We, uh, we have a lot of agents with very long names and they use nicknames to shorten their first name or what have you. And, um, and then their, their, their real name that's on their license is completely different. So this is something that, um, we saw the real estate commission cracking down on probably about five years ago. Any more questions? Angie, I will take the rest of the questions if there are any. I know you've got to get on Contracts 101 in about 10 minutes, and you may yep. need a bathroom break. I don't know, <laughs> but we've been on Zoom since 11. So, yes. Thank um, you, Tom. guys, I'll if there are any more questions, up. please let me know. And, of course, Angie, you always do a fabulous job. Thank and, you. And um, uh, we appreciate everything you bring to the table. Oh, Thank you guys. And uh, I'll let y'all wrap it up and I'm going to go get pre prepared for um, contracts 101 part three, talking about exhibits uh, to the purchase and sales. So anybody wants to join me on that, that comes up. Uh, we're starting that in about eight minutes. Awesome. Well, guys, if there aren't any more questions, we will, uh, uh, I will say thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this was informative. Uh, if you're not uh, on the uh, industry update calls at 11, you should be. There's so much going on in the industry, and there was so much great conversation today uh, at 11 o'clock on uh, some of the lawsuit settlement that you're going to be hearing a whole lot about from your team uh, leaders and from your brokers uh, to uh, make sure that you are comfortable with what's going on and um, earn the money that you need to earn. So uh, I appreciate Tom, you joining Tom, us today. Tom, Tom. Yes. Excuse me. May I ask one quick question? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, I'm I'm going through my Facebook ads right now to make sure I've got the information correct. But how far back do you think we need to clean up our ads? 
I, I would say if they're no longer relevant, they need to be deleted. If they are relevant, like maybe you're talking about, um, maybe you're trying to get home sellers. It's nothing specific to a property. It's just your wanted home sellers. Yeah, if, it, if there's nothing property specific, uh, I don't, you know, there's, you can post whatever you want to post. If it's property specific, I would go ahead and clean it up and delete what's not relevant to that property anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Have a good day, everybody.